Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Welcome to a brand new series. My name's Steve Woody and this is Star Atlas. And in this series, we're going to be going from zero to hero, hopefully. The idea behind this is I'm gonna walk you through the process of playing this game with nothing more than $20 in my account. I think $20 is a reasonable amount of money to play for a game. And even though this game is in early access and still very, very early in the development, I still feel like it's a good investment to be able to make in this game and I want to see what's possible. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, I'm going to assume that you understand the basics of crypto and Web3 and that you have a crypto wallet set up and that you know how to put funds into it. I'm also going to uh, assume that you understand the basics of Star Atlas as a, uh, a game and what it is. Uh, and so if you don't, I've got other videos that will cover that. Um, but we're not going to cover that uh, introduction in this video. We're just going to jump straight into click play now. And we're going to connect our wallet. So uh, the first thing we want to do is we're going to go into Sage Labs. But before we do that, we need to check out the marketplace, right? We need to buy something. So uh, let's go ahead and click on a marketplace. And we need to look at what we're going to buy. Now, we're going to need a ship. That's absolutely certain. So if we click on ships. We're not really going to be able to afford much, uh, so we'll go for the extra small ships. Um, we're actually going to itemize these by price. So the cheapest one here, and we can put these into tab, is going to be the Fimble Air Bike. This is the racer bike, it's a double X small. And this at the moment is going to set us back somewhere in the region of about $4. Okay, so. We're going to have to buy one. Uh, the cheapest one on here is uh, $4.16. So we're going to go ahead and we're actually going to buy two of these. We're going to go ahead and we're going to connect our Phantom Wallet. All right, we have $20 available in our account and we're going to go ahead and we're going to purchase two of these. It's going to cost us $8.32. All right, so let's go ahead and buy two of these items. All right, there we go. So a little bit of Solana for the transaction fee. I did put 0.1 Solana in the account just for gas. Uh, we're going to buy two Fimble air bikes and it's going to cost us $8.32. So we're going to go ahead and confirm that. All right, that's purchased. We now have two NFTs. Uh, we now own them. Now, what we're also going to need to do is acquire some resources. Uh, so that's going to be quite important as well. So let's go ahead and look at our resources. Uh, we're going to need to get some ammunition. So let's have a look at that, shall we? And see how much it costs. All right, so ammunition at the moment is relatively cheap. Uh, we're going to be able to buy some of this. So if we were to go ahead and buy some, uh, we need to buy some Atlas first. We need to get Atlas. Now we could also go ahead and buy this for um, USDC. So we can do that. We can swap that here on a filter. And we can go ahead and we can buy this. And there's plenty here for us to be able to buy. So if we were to buy, let's say, um, 100,000 of these, 100,000, that's going to cost us $1.20 for 100,000 uh, ammunition, which I think is going to be uh, absolutely fine. It's plenty for us. Uh, so we can do that. We can do 100,000 of ammunition, and then we're not going to run out for a while, and that should uh, keep us going until we need to craft some more. All right, perfect. Another $1.20 spent there, and we have our ammunition. Let's get some food because we're going to need some food as well. Okay, so we're going to go back to the USDC and we're going to buy just the cheapest one on here. And look, we can even go a bit further than this and we can buy a million food. A million food is only going to cost us $2 in. So we don't need a million. We'll buy 500,000. It's $1. $1 for 500,000 food. Not a problem. We can do that. Let's go ahead and we'll spend a dollar there as well and buy that food. That'll keep us going for a while, keep our crew fed. All right, so we've now done that. We'll get some fuel. Fuel's going to be quite important. We're going to need some fuel. So we'll go ahead and we'll purchase this. Cheapest one we can get. All right, now here, um, we're going to spend 250000 All right, it's about $1.5. We don't want to spend too much, uh, but we're going to keep it nice and clean. So another $1.5 there. All right, that's perfect. And finally, some toolkits. We want to be able to buy some toolkits. It's the last thing we're going to need. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to purchase those. 
All right, so 100,000 of those is going to cost us $1.30. Amazing. So $1.30, we've just made, uh, made another purchase. I think we also have enough now, with everything that we bought, we can actually go and buy another Fimble Air Bike. I think we have enough money to do this, so let's just have a look. We can, we can, we can afford one more of these, so we're going to buy one more. We've only got uh, $6 available, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to buy one more. All right, there we go. So we now have three Fimble Air Bikes that we've purchased. And we have a little bit of uh, USDC left over. So what we're going to do with the USDC we've got left over, we're going to go to our Phantom Wallet and we're actually going to purchase some Atlas. So what we'll do is we'll swap this. We'll go to swap. We're going to swap our USDC and we're going to type in here Atlas. Start Atlas. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to buy uh, the maximum amount. It's going to give us 1,700. All right, perfect. We'll review that order. We're going to swap that. And that's our $20 spent. So let's just uh, recap and see what we've done here. All right, we have 1,750 Atlas that we've now purchased. We've still got our Solana, 0 0.1 Solana, just over. And in our NFTs, uh, we've bought 100Ks worth of ammunition, three Fimble air bikes, 250K fuel, 500K fu food. Um, I don't know what hidden collection is. It's a, on a toolkit, 100K toolkit. And we can ignore that, I guess, list. that's fine. So, perfect. Now what we need to do is we need to come across to where we're going to play. And we're going to play in Sage Labs. So, come across to Sage Labs. And we're going to load the game. We need to choose our wallet, which is a phantom wallet. We're going to connect. And we're going to connect to the game. All right, so first thing we're going to have to do as we log into labs.startatlas.com uh, is create ourselves a character. So let's go ahead and do that. Select our faction. What faction do we want to belong to? We can take a little bit of time and we can research this. We don't need to jump straight into this. Uh, and the best thing to do here is to really understand for where you want to be, how this is going to benefit you. So one thing I want to show you just before we continue here is if I bring up my uh, documents, I'm just going to go into a download folder that I've got here. I'm going to open up a file. Now, this file is by the Hologram News Network. You can follow them on Twitter. They do uh, incredible updates for Star Atlas. And they've actually created this image. So looking at this image, we can actually see there are three different zones. We have the Mud faction at the bottom here. We have the Oni faction at the top left here. And we have the UST uh, faction at the top right here. Now, these have been broken up evenly, but what we're also going to see here on top is a, a richness level, 1, 1.5, or 2. This is how, much, how many resources are required to mine the resources in this area. And so if it is a rich area, it will cost less resources to farm. So if we go somewhere that is a number 2, we will spend less resources farming here than if we was to farm here. But obviously, as you can see, it's further out. So it's gonna cost us more fuel to get there, but as a result, we're gonna use less resources to mine there. All right, bearing that in mind, we've also got nine uh, resources available. So in Star Atlas, we have what's known as the core four. The core four is going to be the fuel, the ammunition, it's going to be the food, and the toolkits that we just purchased. Now, using those core four, we're able to farm additional resources, hydrogen, biomass, copper, carbon, iron, uh, luminite, diamond, uh, arco, or, uh, and, and those are going to be based on different locations. So, for example, arco is not available in the mud region, um, but then diamonds are not available in any other region. So diamonds are in mud. Um, arco is only available in uh, UST. And... I think that's Rocket Owl is only available in Oni. Now we're going to go for the mud region. That's where we're going to go for. And when we're looking at where we're going to set ourselves up, one of the first things we're going to want to do is be self-sufficient. That means we're going to need to farm resources. So let's have a quick look at the crafting tree and what this looks like here. So we can see here the crafting tree. 
Uh, this is thanks to Star Horizons. Okay, so we can see here that biomass at a ratio of 2 to 1 creates food. All right. We can also see that if we want to create ammunition, we need copper ore at a ratio of 1 to 1 to create copper, and then a ratio of 2 to 1 to create ammunition. Now we can make food and ammunition. Great. Hydrogen will make fuel at a ratio of 3 to 1. Good to know. And then finally, the last thing we would need to make is iron ore into iron, and that would make toolkits at a ratio of 2 to 1. So those are the four R. We are able to then generate more of these and use this to be able to create additional resources that we can then sell in a marketplace ourselves. All right, so let's have a, con uh, a look and consider what it is we want to do at the moment. So coming away from these images for now, uh, we definitely want to look at hydrogen. Hydrogen is something that's important. I'll just bring this back up again so you can see. So we're going to need hydrogen for fuel. Fuel is very important. We're going to need a lot of it. So hydrogen is important. Uh, that means we're going to want to be somewhere in this area here. This is a 1, 1.5, 1.5, and a 2, but this is on its own. So it might be better if we get something else. For example, if we can do hydrogen and copper together, that means we can get the ammunition that we need and the fuel that we need. The ammunition and the fuel is going to allow us to be able to continue farming in this space to get more ammunition and fuel. And then what we're going to need to do is use the fuel to head over here. We can get some biomass to get some food. And that's pretty much all we're going to need, apart from iron, uh, and iron we can get from here. So these two squares here, MRZ4 and MRZ3, look like a really good location for us to set up. We're going to get the core four resources that we need in these two squares, and we just need to jump between the two of them. So we can actually set up here. This can be our base, and we can just pop across, and we can use these two as needed. All right, that's what we're going to do. That's our plan. So we need to start off here and get set up, and we need to head out to MRZ4, and that is where we're going to base our operations from. The other thing that we're going to want to do is make toolkits. We can do that from here. And then with toolkits, we can scan. And with scan, we can hopefully make some SD, um, SDUs, which we can then sell for Atlas. And then we can increase our Atlas. That's the plan. That's the goal. So what I'm going to do here, uh, I'm actually just going to create a document. And I'm going to create this document in uh, Google. So what I'm going to do is just open up a new tab. I'll bring this into a new screen. And I'm going to open up a Google Sheet. This is going to be a brand new blank Google Sheet. And I am purely going to do this for uh, documenting purposes. So let's call this zero to hero. You don't have to do this. Uh, it's just I'm going to do this myself. So um, initial deposit. And then we're going to put the date. Uh, so the date today is it's currently the 23rd of September 2023. OK. And that was $20. All right. So then initial purchase, what did we buy? Well, we bought uh, the Fimble air bikes. Uh, we bought three of them. So let's have a look at doing this. So this is going to be um, item, quantity, price. OK, so this was the uh, air bike. We bought three of these. And I need to double check the price, but I can go up to my Solana wallet for this. I can look at my transaction history, which is just here, and I can see I paid 416 for these. So I paid 416. Okay. And then I can also work out a total. So that's going to equal that uh, times that. Perfect. Okay. So then I also bought ammo. I also bought fuel. I also bought food and I bought toolkits. So let's just have a quick look and uh, clarify what it is that we bought uh, and how much of each we have. So we can do that again in this uh, tab here. So I can see I bought um, toolkits. Okay, uh, this was uh, I believe it was 100,000 that we bought, right? Uh, let's just go back and look at the NFTs here. So ammunition, let's do the ammo first. So that was 100,000 ammo. Okay, let's have a look at the fuel. 
So fuel 250 and food 500. And then toolkits were 100,000. All right, so we have 250, 500, and 100,000. Okay, now we can look at the transaction costs and just see those prices. Just so we can make a note of them. Uh, and now we know everything that we've spent and what it's cost us. So here we go here. Ammo, ammo cost us uh, $1.20, food cost us $1. And then the fuel cost us $1.50. So what do we have here? We have, what I'll do, I'm just gonna print the screen, just make it a little bit easier, put that in there, and we'll just paste it in here. There we go. So the price of this is gonna be for the ammo, $1.20. Uh, for the fuel that we bought, $1.50. For the food that we bought, uh, that was $1, and for the toolkits, that was $1.30. We can go ahead and copy these all the way down. Oh, that is not correct. Hmm. Oh, that was just one, wasn't it? Sorry. <laughs> so uh, that, that can just equal that price. Okay, so whatever that is on that, uh, we can just copy that across because that's, that's what it costs total, not per unit. Okay, so then what we have is a total here. So we can do the sum of this and that's $17.84 that we spent. We also bought some Atlas. So we did a conversion of Atlas as well. So we can now remove this. And we can see we spent 1,754. That's what we bought. 1,754 Atlas. And that transaction cost us $2.52. There we go, there's our $20 spent. So that's everything that we've spent. Uh, and we now have this as a, uh, I'm just gonna put this as summary, initial deposit. And that means that we just have a track record. You don't have to do this, um, but if you're going to be uh, investing and you're going to be checking things over, it does make sense to keep kind of a, a diary of what you're doing. And so I recommend this. You don't have to do it. I've done it just because it's simple and easy to do. If you do it as you go along, it makes things nice and easy. If you don't want to do this, you don't have to. Uh, you can just play the game and enjoy it and chuck $20 in. And if you get nothing back, so be it. Who cares? Um, but I want to see what we can do with this and what's possible. So. Let's go ahead into Sage Labs and we're going to go into the mud faction. We know we want to be. Uh, we're going to call this zero to hero. All right, and it's kind of zero. Should be 20 to hero, but that'll do. Let's create our character, shall we? All right, we're going to go ahead and confirm this uh, transaction. Let's go ahead and do that. And here we are, we're in the game. So hopefully you uh, have seen my previous videos and you know how to play this. So first one we're going to do now is make sure we've disabled Atlas Prime. We're not going to use Atlas. Uh, there's an additional fee for using this. So we're actually just going to use um, Solana itself. And we're going to go to our MUD CSS. We're going to navigate to the sector and we need to make a deposit. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to deposit or withdraw ships. We have our free Fimble air bikes. So let's put all of those in. All right, we're going to deposit that to the Starbase. All right, let's confirm that. We're going to pay our fee. Uh, we're also going to auto confirm. We're going to turn that on as well just to make it a little bit easier for us. And off we go. All right, there we go. They're now available and in the Starbase. Now we can go across to our Starbase hangar and we can form a new fleet. All right, so our fleet at the moment, because we need to move, can just simply be all three of these. So we can go ahead and add all three and we can form a new fleet. Uh, what we're going to call this, um, um, we'll call this zero, and then we'll have hero later. See what, see what we can make. All right, let's form the new fleet. Oh, there we go. That did work. I'm sure it did. Let's go back to the Starbase Hammer. There we go. Zero fleet. That's now been created. All right, awesome. So now we've got our fleet. We can click on this and we need to add some resources. Now we don't have any at the moment, so we need to go to my inventory and we need to bring across everything from here. So 
first thing we're going to do is bring across this, which is 100,000. Uh, here's going to be 500,000, 250,000, and 100,000. All right, that's all of our resources that we have. We're going to import that from the wallet. We'll go ahead and do that as a one-time import. And there we go, available in the Starbase. Everything is now available. We can also go ahead if we wanted to and transfer that to the fleet. So that is now going to put the fuel tank and the ammo bank status uh, at 100%. Uh, if I went ahead and I clicked on transfer to fleet, that should now do that for me. Uh, it might only do it when you import. So let's actually go back to the Starbase hangar where we was before. Click on this and we're going to refuel to 100%. And we're going to restock to 100%. That's going to give us our fuel. And that's going to give us our ammo. Awesome. Now, we can also have a look at our fleet composition. We have three air bikes. So what does that give us in terms of stats? Well, we're not very fast. We can't go very far. And we don't really have much cargo capacity. It's 747 at the moment. Fuel capacity is not very much. Um, ammo capacity is not very much. And the mining rate isn't very much. So we're really starting off at the bottom. But we've got free crew. And uh, yep, scan call time is very slow at a minute. And scan tool consumption toolkits is free. So we're kind of really starting off on the back foot here. But we've got everything that we need. And we're almost fully loaded. So let's just go ahead and go into our hangar for the last time. Uh, sorry, into our inventory. And let's load up. Let's actually load up into our ship. So we've got a capacity of 747, which is not a lot. But what can we take with us? Well, we're going to need to really take some food with us, right? And we can only do, at the moment, a scan. So we can do a scan, which is going to cost us free. Um, so maybe we'll take like 30 of these toolkits with us. And then we're going to take some food with us. We need to take some food with us. So we'll take like... Uh, 500 food and then I recommend we just take a little bit of extra fu uh, fuel uh, so 240 oh 240 there we go 217 fuel in fact let's just take 200 fuel there we go we're at 97% capacity all right so that's pretty much all we can take at the moment we're pretty full um, that's all we've got. We're going to transfer that to our fleet. So that's now going to be in our cargo. All right, now we're at capacity. Uh, we can undock. So let's go to our starbase, go to our hangout. Click on this and we're going to undock. Here we go. Let's see what we can do, shall we? All right, so the first thing we're going to do with our undocked fleet is we're going to manage our fleet and we're going to scan the sector where we are. It's going to put us on a cooldown, and we'll see if we can get anything. All right, we are going to pay this, uh, this fee at the moment. Auto confirm is unavailable. I'm not sure why, but we're going to go ahead and confirm that. Scan did not reveal anything. That's a shame. We were unfortunate there. All right, so let's look at where we're going to move to then. So we're going to move. And in terms of moving, we can uh, only move in one square. <laughs> That's all we can do. <laughs> one square. So we're going to use sub warp. The reason we're going to use sub warp is because it's going to allow us to move a lot further. Now, considering where we want to go, and we mentioned this already, uh, we want to go to, I'm going to bring this uh, image back up on the screen because I talked about this before. Uh, we want to go to MRZ9, uh, sorry, MRZ4 and MRZ3. 4 and 3. So MRZ4 is our first stop. All right, so let's go to Manage Fleet. And let's find MRZ4. So we know it's kind of over in this direction. Uh, we need to use Sub Warp. That's MUD5, MRZ1, MRZ4. There it is, MRZ4. So that's where we're going to head to. It's going to take us 33 minutes to get there, and we're going to use 700 and 35 fuel you will have 45 percent fuel remaining after sub warping all right 
That's all we got. So we're going to have to go there. And once we get there, we're going to have to generate more fuel. That's the first thing we're going to have to do. So that's why we're going to this location so that we can then uh, we can mine some fuel and then we can harvest that fuel to give us more fuel. All right. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to sub warp there and it's going to take us 33 minutes. All right, let's go. We're on our way. There we go. En route to location. That's 33 minutes till we get there. So what can we do in the meantime? Well, in the meantime, we can consider what we're going to do. Now, the first thing we're going to do in our new sheet, we'll open up a new tab. And in here, we need to consider uh, what resources is it that we want to acquire? Well, the first thing we want to do is we need to get fuel, okay? Uh, we also need to get ammo and we need to get food. And then later on, if we're lucky, we can get toolkits, okay? Now the fuel is going to allow us to be able to uh, move about, but also every time we mine, we need to use fuel to start mining. So we need to understand what is the mining cost? What is it gonna cost us to mine? Uh, also, because we're mining asteroids, we're gonna use a certain amount of ammo up. So we need to know how much ammo are we gonna use up. Then what we need to know is our food. How much food are we gonna use up to mine? And finally, if we do scanning later, how many toolkits we're going to use. Now we have quite a considerable amount in our uh, CSS, our central space station, but the problem at the moment we have is moving it. It's very slow and we don't have much capacity to be able to move stuff across. So getting stuff to our location and getting set up is very difficult. It would be a lot of back and forth trips, filling up that cargo, back and forth, back and forth. Um, and again, that's going to eat into our, our profit margin and we don't really want to do that. So the idea is we'll leave what we can in the uh, CSS space for now and we'll see what we can start to generate to be self-sufficient. What we also want to do at the same time is we want to uh, scan as often as we can and we want to grab those um, SDUs. The SDUs, uh, if I just go back to the Starbase, uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, we're going to look at the uh, Starbase Crafting Workshop. Now there are four tiers and then there are STUs. So tier one is all of your basic resources. Copper uh, and iron, uh, which are two of the basic resources. Uh, we also have, uh, as well as copper and iron, um, not crafting, but other basic resources that we can acquire. So just bring up the image that we talked about before so you can see it again. We have hydrogen, biomass, copper, carbon, iron, and then in this case, we have also diamonds. Okay, so also diamonds and the bottom two don't exist. So uh, for this location, for this location specifically, there are seven assets, seven assets. And then if we look at this image, uh, so this is the image we showed you earlier, we need biomass for food. We need copper uh, that goes into copper ore to copper that goes into ammo. Uh, we need hydrogen into fuel. We need iron ore into iron, and that will go into toolkits. Okay, so these are the yellow food, ammo, fuel, and toolkits. And it's the toolkits that we're going to be using to generate us these SDUs. So what is an SDU? And, and by the way, we don't need to worry about anything else at the moment. Right? That will all come later. All right, so what are SDUs and why do we need them? Well, if we look in the... Uh, crafting menu, uh, not in tier one, not even in tier two. Uh, we're going to come out of tier three uh, into tier four. And the last thing, which is only available in the uh, the central space station. So you could in any star base, you can craft tier one to four and they're all the same. But in the central space station, you can craft SDUs. And an SDU, if we just come across to the uh, a new tab, and I'm going to come across to Play Star Atlas. All right, and we're going to come across to the marketplace. So I want to come back across to the marketplace. And I want to show you the resources that are available. In resources, there is uh, consumables, which we've talked about. This is your basics, your ammunition, food, fuel, and toolkits. Golden Tickets is a special event at the moment. We're going to ignore that just for now. Uh, components, uh, by the way, oh, sorry, let's go back. So we have raw material. Raw material are these here, which we've talked about. All right, so let's say we were to get some copper ore. 
We could then come and sell copper ore, but it's not really worth that much. And there's a lot of it at the moment. So, yeah, not worth that much. Okay, so raw materials are there. Well, what else do we have? We could take raw materials and we could uh, compound that to make other things. So like copper, iron, steel. And copper is going to be worth a little bit more because it takes a little bit more work. Not that much more. We can also make copper wire. Copper wire, again, worth a little bit more. Not that much. If you look at the moment, actually, as 0 0.002 for copper, 0 0.002, and 0 0.008 for copper wire. So you can see how it's worth a little bit more as you go, uh, as you got the, the process. Crystal lattice, going to be a little bit more, 0 0.009. So you can start to see um, there's a lot of this stuff for sale. Now, the reason that I want to do SDUs is because if we go back to the game, and we look at these SDUs, these are all of the NFTs that you can craft. All of these NFTs. So for example, if I wanted to craft a ship, like a Fimble Mamba, I can do that. It's gonna cost uh, an incredible amount of resources, but I can do that. In fact, if I wanted to craft an additional, if I wanted to craft an additional air bike, Fimble air bike, I could do that. I would need some toolkits, which I have a lot of. All right, so I would need some toolkits. I would also need some power sources, some survey data units, uh, some copper wire and some iron. Well, I can get the iron, I can get the copper wire. It's going to take me a while, but I can get there. And then if I do that, I'm going to be able to um, craft another Fimble air bike and I can slowly start to increase my... Uh, the idea here is I can slowly start to increase my um, fleet. Uh, and that's what we're going to do. Uh, to start with, we want to get up to 10 Fimble air bikes. That's the goal. So how can we do that? How can we craft these to get up to 10? Well, this is what we need. Iron, toolkits, copper wire, power sources, and survey data. All right. So let's go ahead and we're going to take a picture of this. All right. Because this is what we want. And we're going to go across to our zero to hero. And we're just going to paste this in here for now. So we have it and we can come back and look at it later. All right. Awesome. So now we've got this. But now I need to know, well, okay, iron I know comes from iron. That's simple enough. So I can look on the list. If I go to all lists, and I look at iron. I can see that iron is here, an output of one to one. And if you don't want to go through this list, um, another easy way to do this is simply to open up this image here. In fact, let's just copy this image. I will go ahead and copy this image. Close this down. We'll move that one for a minute and we we'll paste this one in here as well. There we go. So now we have this image as well. Great. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to grab the last image there and I'll just, uh, I'll just, for now, I'm going to put this into a new sheet. Just so we've got it. It's a bit of a big image, but this shows us everything that we've got and what we're doing. So great. We've got that. So we'll just call this one map. Uh, and this one we'll just call crafting. Perfect. And this one we'll call deposit. All right, amazing. So we've got what we need so far. So let's have a look here. We know that we need iron. How do we get iron? Well, iron is a one-to-one. -one. So iron ore, one-to-one, -one, we craft it into iron. Great, not a problem, we can do that. So that's our iron taken care of. Copper wire, how do we do that? Or copper wire, we're going to need copper or into copper into copper wire, and it's a one to one and a one to one. So it's a crafting process, but it's simple. So we can do that. It's just going to take time. Toolkits, well, we know how to do toolkits. Um, that's going to be iron ore into iron and then iron into toolkit, a two to one ratio. Okay, so we understand that. Power source, where do we get power source from? Well, that's here. So power source is going to require carbon. Uh, it's also going to require uh, luminite. So, mm, interesting. Okay, so we need to get... Okay, so we need to get hold of some luminite and some carbon. And that's going to go into the power source. So, power source is going to be a bit of a tricky one for us. But we are going to need some of that. So, how much of that do we need? 3,960. Okay, so now we need to know, well, where do we get our luminite from? Let's go to the map. Luminite. It's actually here. So we'd have to get that later. And that's a 1, and this is a 1.5. So maybe we'll go up here to get this later. We'll have to take a bit of a trek. We'll get everything else crafted first, and we'll have to go up here, get this, bring it back, a couple of trips, 
It might even be better to go here because it's not as far to go. But this is where we'll get our Luminite. So a bit of a trek for that. Um, probably, to be honest, we'll go here. Um, but at this point, we might even just craft additional resources, sell it on the marketplace, and just buy this directly. It might be better for us to do that. We'll have a look and we'll decide. The final thing that we're going to need um, is these survey data units, these SDUs. And this brings me back to the marketplace. So let's have a look at uh, some of these components that we were looking at here. Uh, so power sources, we could buy power sources, um, but already look at the price of them. They're 20 cents each. So they're still they're quite a lot of money. We could sell them for 20 cents each if we made them. So already it's going to be good to make power sources. Uh, let's have a look at some more more material. Maybe we can just buy the Luminite directly. And look, yes, we can. It's so cheap right now. So if we wanted to, uh, this could be our purchase. So let's have a look and see how much is it going to cost us if we wanted to purchase this. So I want to work out right now, whilst we're here, what it's going to cost us to craft this. So in terms of iron, all right, what are we going to need? Right, so let's have a look at resources. So iron, we're going to need uh, 13,247. Okay. In terms of copper wire, we're going to need 23,760. In terms of toolkits, uh, we're going to need nine, oh no, sorry, 7,000. Got to make sure I get the number right. 920. In terms of power source, this is the hard one. We're actually going to need 3,960. And then we're going to need the SDU, the survey data unit. And for that, we're going to need 679. Okay, so from iron, we're going to need iron ore. Okay. From copper wire, we're going to need copper. And then from copper, we're going to need copper ore. For toolkits, we're going to need iron, because I do believe if we check down here, this is going to be iron ore into iron into toolkits. All right, so this is going to be iron. Oh. Into iron ore. So this is going to be one, but this is going to be two. Two iron into one toolkit, whereas everything else is just a one for one. And then we need the power source. So what's the power source? That's going to require... Um, luminate, uh, luminite. Sorry, let me put that in here. So, yep, luminite, and also it's going to require carbon. Now, luminite goes directly in two to one. So two to one. Yep, and then this is going to be carbon. Carbon goes in five to one into graphite. Okay, so. Put this one on the next line down because I want to create this. Uh, that is going to be graphene. Okay, and graphene is going to come from carbon. So five carbon makes one graphene. Yep. And then one graphene into the power source. Perfect. All right, so now we can work out what it is that we need to make this work. So I know I'm going to need 3,960 power sources, which means I need 3,960 graphene, but that's five carbon. So that means I'm going to need that times five. That's how much carbon I'm going to need. Let's look at iron ore. Iron ore is a two to one, which means that I'm going to need this times two which means I'm also going to need that to equal that. Also for copper ore, copper ore is quite easy. It's just a one-to-one. -one. So that means that that is just going to equal that. And let's put the iron ore back here so everything's in the same line. Iron ore, very simple as well. So that's just going to equal that. All right, so iron ore, copper ore, iron ore, and luminite, which again, we're going to put that just here. And this is a two to one. So again, we're going to have to go from that times two. Perfect. So these, and then this, which is the SDU, uh, which is slightly different. So we're going to leave that there. In fact, I'll put that 
on the next line down. Okay, so this is everything that is required for crafting. Okay, now these are all of the basic core ingredients that we have to farm. So the question now is going to be how much is it going to cost us to farm this amount of iron ore? And also, how long is it going to take? Bearing in mind, we only have a capacity. We only have a limited capacity. Uh, and that is, I think it was like 700. It was under 1,000, right? So that's 23 mining trips there, 15 tri mining trips there, 20 mining trips there. How long is a mining trip going to take us? You know, all of this stuff we have to consider. So let's have a quick look and see how we're doing in terms of our journey. Because we're currently on a journey at the moment. And also, let's have a look whilst we're here at the data. How much are these SDUs selling for? Right now, they're selling for 0 0.03. 0 0.03 each. And people are only willing to pay 0 0.02, but somewhere in that region. So if I want a quick sell, 0 0.2, but I can probably put it up for 0 0.3. Okay. So we can see and we get the idea of what we can sell and what things are worth. Also, if we have a look at the price of this, so at the moment, uh, Luminite is worth that much. Okay. So let's also have a look at power source. How much is a power source worth at the moment? Well, there's no one buying it at the moment, but if that's what people are willing to sell it for. Is it going to sell for that? Possibly. Could we go for a little bit less than that? Yes, we could. All right. What do we need to be able to do that? Well, we need to have, as we know, uh, carbon. How much is carbon going to cost? Carbon's very cheap. All right, so we could buy some carbon. We could buy some luminate. We could take that to the um, space station. We could just craft it. And then we could try and sell that as a power source. And that way, we'd actually be able to craft our bikes. And it might actually be a lot cheaper for us to do that. Uh, it'd be quite interesting to know. So what we can do here is we can look at the prices of what things are selling for. All right, and we can work out what the value of this is. So let's have a look at iron ore to start with. If we were to look on the market right now, iron ore. Okay, what is iron ore? If we were to, these are sellers, people that are selling it. So if we were to buy it for this much, this is what we would pay if we were buying it. Okay. So I want to just take that price, copy that, come across to here and paste that in there. All right, so uh, this is going to be uh, USD. That's how much that's going to cost. Uh, and in total is going to be equals that times that. All right, so already we're going to have to spend, if we were to buy this on the market, just in iron ore alone, $4.37. Now, that's more than the cost of the bike. It was cheaper to buy the bike, right? So maybe what we can do is just farm the iron ore, sell it, and then buy the bike directly because it will be cheaper. This is where we have to start thinking about how we're going to make our money, what we're going to do. We've got a plan, we know what we're doing, but now we're starting to identify things. So the question is, is anyone actually buying this? Well, we can see people are selling it. Buyers, maybe not so much. Are people buying it? Are people selling it? Depends. 80,000 of this just went on the market for that much money. So you can see the prices going down, going down, going down. We have to watch it and we have to keep an eye on it. The good news about this is there's a website that you can use that will do this for you. Um, it's a website which I will uh, bring up. In fact, let me just come across to here. I'm going to take that to another tab so I can grab it. It is. Okay, here we go. I'll bring this up. So this is called Starstat. Now, if I go to Starstat, I can click on a market and I can go to history. If I go to history, I can actually choose uh, some items. So on here, I can look at the price of something. I can look at the price of something like iron ore. And I can see over the last 30 days, it's not actually going to show me anything because... Well, it's there's just no volume here at the moment, so it's not working, but it kind of gives you an idea. So we'll we'll be able to look at this a bit later uh, once there's some more data in here. But this will give you an idea where you'll be able to track whether it's up or down. Uh, it's just not populating at the moment because it's uh, a bit too early. 
but that is uh, starstat.org. So, all right, well, we currently know what that's going to cost us uh, if we were to do it for that price. Because we can see there's actually one on there for a bit cheaper now. 250. Uh, we can now see that price. All right, so, so far it's still cheaper, but what about the copper ore? What about the iron ore? What about the other costs? Things to consider, right? It might be better, because again, if we try and sell that iron ore, there's no guarantee that we're gonna sell it, that anyone's gonna buy it. Um, so you have to run that risk of, well, do you sell it or do you not? If we did that, then we would save all of the other hassle and we would get a bike much quicker. So these are the things we have to look at, we have to consider, and we'll work the rest of this out later. But for now, to get started, uh, let's just go back, look at our undock fleet. In fact, let's just go back to our dashboard. And we're going to have a look at how our fleet is doing. We've got 13 minutes till we arrive at our location. Once we get to our location, we'll be able to start mining. And at that point, we'll be able to see how we're doing. So, for the purpose of this initial video, uh, I think we've covered everything we needed to cover. Uh, this has been a good episode. I don't want to spend too long uh, on this because. Uh, already, uh, just today alone doing this, we've already spent sort of 45 minutes. I want to keep these to about 30 minute episodes. So for today, we've set up our, we've set up our wallet, we uh, made our purchases on the marketplace, uh, and we jumped into the game. And now we're on our way to our location. So in the next video, we'll be able to start mining, uh, and then we'll be able to have a look at what all of the other costs are. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time finishing off this sheet here, and just working out what all of the costs are in the current marketplace and what it's going to cost us resources so we know is it a viable option to build this or is it better just to sell the core resources make our profit that way and we're going to look at how we can make some initial profit using our free bikes that we currently have and how we can increase our fleet because that's what we want to do we want to increase our fleet up to 10 bikes do we buy or sell do we just craft we'll, we'll look at the options uh, join me in the next video and we'll actually get into some mining and some more gameplay. Thanks for watching.